Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Candace and I'm your congenial, super congenial usually, um, sometimes spazzy, more often than not spazzy and sometimes aggressive host. Hi, welcome. If this is your first time here, you don't know what you've done. You don't know what you've done to yourself. If you are a repeat viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. I really appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing um, a book that's like fairly recent. It came out like a, um, a couple weeks ago, maybe. I, I don't. I don't really remember. I don't. It's, it's recent. It's fairly recent. Um, this is going to be Hardware by author Misha Bell, which Misha Bell is actually the pen name for two authors, um, Anna Zaries, and I believe it's her husband co-wrote the book, and I think his name is Dima Zales. If I'm wrong on any of this, I know you'll get me. I'm... I know you'll get me, so, and that's fine. I, I don't mind. You come for me if you wish. I, I can't be bothered at this point. Um, so, this is book two of a series. Um, as far as I know, there's going to be three books in the series. It, will there be more? I'm not sure. Uh, the first one I did review on this channel. If you go back uh, several videos and you look for a book called Hard Code, that is the first book in the series. This is book two called Hardware. And the third book is called Hard Bite, um, like Megabyte or computer-ish, you know, byte, B-Y-T-E. Um, and it is going to be released on July 13th of this year. So I'm super excited for that one because I like, um, I like Alex and he's, that's, I believe it's the, that's his book. He's one of the brothers. Okay. So there's three siblings. First book, Hard Code, was, um, Vlad's book. Okay. I, my brain. I had a brain fart. This book um, is, uh, what the fuck is her name? What's her name? Oh my God. What the fuck is her name? Bella. <laughs> Why are you here? It can't be for quality content because this is not, <laughs> this is not it. Um, I'm obviously terrible at this. If you're a repeat viewer, you know that. So and you're still here and I really appreciate that because I know I'm a lot to take in. Um, okay. So the, uh, so this one is Bella's book, which is book two. And then the third book is their other brother, um, Alex. Okay. Alex, I think is like a video game designer, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited for his book. Um, okay. So this book is a rom-com. The first, I think all the books in the series will be a rom-com, will be rom-coms. Um, I'm not too, uh, like I always thought of rom-com in terms of movies. I never really thought of it as it applies to books. And I don't think I've read a lot of rom-coms book-wise, like novel-wise. So, like, I love books that have humor in them. Like, a lot of Gina Showalter's books, a lot of Cressley Cole's books, they have, like, a humor element. There's a lot of banter. There's a lot of, uh, like, humor between the, the main characters. And I really like that. I love a lighthearted, good-feeling book, but also that has, like, a juicy plot. Um... This, these books are more feel good books. Um, they do have plot, obviously, because you can't pull 285 pages out of your ass. That's, a, that's about nothing. Um, but the, the humor is like the main thing throughout these books. Like everything is funny. Like if you watch my review for um, Hard Code, I love that book. Hilarious the antics were off the charts like it and because I don't maybe because I don't do a lot of rom-coms it was like a whole new world a whole new world 
worked for me. And um, maybe that's why I liked it so much. I'm not sure. But anyway, five minutes in. I haven't told you anything about the book. Okay, so you can currently get this book for your Kindle or Nook for the price of $4.99. You can get it in paperback for $12.99. I'm assuming at that price that it's going to be um, like a big trade paperback. I don't think this is mass market yet. Um, you can get it in hardcover for $19.99. To my knowledge, you can't get it used on eBay. I looked. I couldn't find it. Speaking of, okay, I'm nearly going on Amazon. Amazon, are you watching? I know you're not because nobody wa nobody's watching, but... I had a hell of a time finding this book on Amazon. I put in the author's name, hard code came up, the other two nothing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Am I doing something wrong? Was my search engine off? I don't know like what that was about, but I put in the author's name, I put in the name of the book. I put in the combination of the author's name and the name of the book, hardware. And I got like makeup. What the f what? Anyway, if you're looking for this author and for this book, what I would do and what I actually, not what I would do, but what I actually ended up doing was going to Google and putting in the author's name and the name of the book. And then the first thing that popped up on the search engine was the Amazon link to the thing. And that's how I found it on Amazon. Instead of actually searching on Amazon. What? Anyway. If you can't find it, go to Google because Google's like my best friend. The, every Google will tell you everything you need to know. Um, so I will read you guys the blurb and then we can break it down. And like I said before, this book allegedly is 285 pages, which that's okay. Like I, it's not, mm, I've talked about this before where I, where I stand on like novella length versus whatever. I've also been told that Amazon's page length counter thing on the, uh, on the book page is not always accurate. And I've found that to be true a lot of the time. Um, according to Amazon, the Kindle version of this is 285 pages. I normally consider anything under 250 pages to be like novella or like around 200, anything under 200, definitely novella. 200 to 300 gray area, 300 plus full length novel. That's my stance. I know it's not everyone's stance. You believe what you want to believe, right? Um, but that's just me. And so 285 pages is closing in on full length novel and at the far end of that gray spectrum. So I, I'm, I'm down for that. So I will read you guys the blurb for this book and then we can break it down a little bit because it was a super cute book. I really liked it. I'm really looking forward to the third book in the series. So um, the blurb for this one says, so my chihuahua fell in love with a bear, excuse me, a giant bear-like dog. <laughs> now the bear's scorching hot owner is on my case demanding an STD test for my pet. Another problem with this doggy love affair, the bear's mysterious owner may be the key to funding my new venture and taking my toy company to the next level. And by toys, I mean the fun kind, the kind every woman and man needs. If only I could figure out what he's hiding or get my libido to behave, because mixing business and pleasure is a bad idea and Dragomir Lamian may not be who he seems. Okay. Okay, the two main characters for this book are Dragomir, who is the male protagonist, I guess, um, and Bella. I forget her last name, Chorsky, Chorsky, I think. Um, so she is Russian and Dragomir is, um, what the fuck country is he from? Um, shit. I forget. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, if I think of it, I'll, I'll, I'll have a spaz moment where I just stop everything that I'm talking about and just be like, <laughs> um, but for right now I can't remember. But anyway, it's a smaller Ruscovia. I, I told you I'd do it. Um, so 
Dragomir is from Rescovia, uh, which is a smaller country, I guess. I don't know. Is that a real country? Like Russia, obviously I've heard of. I know that it is Rescovia a real country. I know I don't know jack shit about geography, y'all. And I haven't been to school in a long time, so don't ask me. I couldn't even tell you where the fuck Utah is located. Like, that's how spazzy I am. Um, Dragomir is from Rescovia. He's a very, um, at first uptight businessman, like a snob, if you will. Uh, so the opening scene of the book is basically, um, or like the, what, what old timey, um, Hollywood movies would call a meat cute. The first meat cute of this book, um, is Bella out walking her little dog, which is like, uh, I forget his, yeah, Chihuahua. Um, his name is, um, Boner. <laughs> His name, he's named after, uh, Napoleon, uh, like Napoleon Bonaparte. So she called him Boner. Um, he, she's out walking him in the park. This takes place, I believe in New York, I think. I don't, I don't really remember. I don't care. I don't pay attention to what's going on, like in the background, like geography wise. And like, yes, I love a good descript descriptive novel where it's like, oh. And they lived in a, in a house with a wraparound porch and wisteria was growing on the vines of the... Like, I get that. I like that. I like a good detailed setting. You know what I mean? But I also have time. I don't pay attention because I want to know what's going on with the main characters, right? Um, but so Bella is out walking um, Boner in the park. And she runs across this humongous bear-like dog... Uh, that is like from a, a Ruscovian royal bloodline of dogs that uh, they're like super uber breed, right? Like it's, they're, they're a hot commodity. They're very little known, whatever. So, um, anyway, Boner, a tiny chihuahua, uh, essentially somehow maneuvers his way onto some uh, something that makes it high enough so that I can't remember if it's park bench or whatever uh so that he can basically like hump this other dog the owner of said dog dra is Dragomir and at first glance is a righteous asshole like okay I'm walking my dog in the park I my dog randomly sniffs another dog's butt, tries to hump the other dog. Okay. Like, that's what dogs do, right? This guy is like, your dog just violated my dog. I want you to go and get your dog tested for STDs. And I want the results. And, like, the whole time I'm reading this, I'm going, what? What? Okay, first of all, fuck all the way off. Who are you? Who are you? Like, who even are you to tell me to take my dog to the vet? Because you want to know if you're... Just go get your dog tested. I'm not... Pfft. Also, are, are STDs and dogs a thing? Because I don't... Are they a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I have to do some research on that. But, like... The, the meeting was so, like, I was getting angry at, like, his attitude, like, his machismo. <laughs> what? You, how are you going to tell me to take my dog to, what? Get out of here. Get, shoo, shoo. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. Get out of here. Um, she's very apologetic. She's like, I'm sorry that my dog violated your dog your hulking bear of a dog and my little chihuahua somehow managed to, you know. Um, he writes his, like, phone number on a disposable cup that's sitting in the park. And he's like, call me when you've got this test done um, so I can get the results because I want to know if you if your dog gave my dog anything. She's like, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, she loses the cup. She doesn't call him. She's like, 
wondering, will I meet him again? Whatever, whatever. So she, she like goes back and frequents the park. She doesn't see him again. Bella is the owner of a sex toy company. She is currently trying to get funding for a new venture uh, that's like um, virtual reality. Her main end goal is to create, I think, like a full body suit that with virtual reality will allow you to feel um, what you're seeing. So like if somebody's giving you a hug, you would feel the pressure from said hug, right? And with the bodysuit. Um, if you're trying to do something sexy times, like you would feel like the touchies and stuff, right? Um, so she doesn't think she's gonna get any real funding like for something that's geared for that. So they, her and her brother, uh, Alex, uh, who she try, ropes into helping her get funding for this. Um, they crowdsource the idea. Uh, they morph it, basically morph it into like uh, something called Project Morpheus, where they say that, hey, this, they like keep it very vague. This um, virtual reality thing can be applied towards all these different applications. And they're like low key, it's for sex stuff. But we're not going to tell people that because staunchy old investors, like they're not going to give us money for that. So uh, they start like crowdsourcing this idea. Alex has a line on somebody who might want to invest a, a big honcho, right? They go to meetings. She gets repeatedly snubbed by this um, snarky little executive dude. And uh, she goes to the first meeting. And sure enough, in walks Dragomir. He owns the company that she's trying to get her money from. Uh, he's like, it's you. You haven't called me. And she's like, I lost the cup. And he's like, but did you though? And she's like, I really did. And so eventually uh, he makes some like vague comment about having to recuse himself from the pitch that they're doing um, because he doesn't mix personal stuff with business. And when he says that, she's like, like what personal stuff are you talking about? You got, you got, you got the hots for me? You got a little thing for me? He does. So, um, they do the pitch. The little executive dude, I forget his name, Marco or something. Uh, he's repeatedly snubbing her and talking only to Alex. Like he's very misogynistic as if like she can't be smart enough to invent some VR stuff. Like it must be the guy because she's like his assistant, right? So uh, she puts him in his place real quick and she like gets up and she explains everything. And um, even after that, he's still kind of snubby to her, but less so, I guess. Uh, so they're waiting to hear what's gonna happen. Are, are we gonna get the funding? Are we not gonna get the funding, right? Uh, in the meantime, Dragomir's dog, turns up pregnant. <laughs> so this tiny little chihuahua has somehow managed to impregnate this like Siberian husky type dog, like a huge, massive Ruscovian royal bloodline type dog. Uh, obviously Dragomir's like, yeah, we're not terminating the pregnancy or anything like that. Like this is my dog. And, and I think the dog's name is Winnie. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's like after Winnie the Pooh who is a bear and that's and the dog looks like a bear so um so yeah so over the course of the book they end up like they're attracted to each other and because their their dogs are like involved now with the whole thing uh they're they're seeing each other and they're like oh play dates and you want to come over for a play date and, and in the meantime we're gonna get close and we're gonna we're gonna start fooling around with each other. Um, it, there's a lot of hijinks in this book. Like the first time that they're going to have sex, um, Bella has gotten massively tanked at like her mother's birthday party, which she takes him to and her family. Her family has like, uh, is, her parents have been very uh, mean to her like her whole life. They And when she founded this, sex toy company they saw it as like disgraceful embarrassing type so they treat her like garbage 
She takes Dragomir to her mom's birthday party. They love him. All of a sudden, Bella can do no wrong. Like, she's, you know, but they have motives because he's, you know, he's hot and he's rich and he's whatever. Um, so, over the course of the, like, the first time they, they go to have sex, she's, they've been doing shot for shot. And everything is like a little bet. Like, I bet you I can drink you under the table. I bet, like, the, and they go through the book doing stuff like that. Um, she gets massively drunk. They go back to his place, her place. I can't, I can't remember. But they go back to whatever. And they're getting ready to, to do it. And they're, they're like, you know, getting naked. And, and then she gets super nauseous. And she has to throw up. And she runs to the bathroom and throws up. And he's like holding her hair, which is really sweet, which is really cute. Um, and so she sleeps it off. They don't have sex. Then uh, something happens where uh, he disappears and he's like, the, he calls her and he's like, my brother in Roscovia has been in an accident. I have to go home to check on him to see what's up because he's in the hospital. He's in a coma. And she's like, really? Like, this sounds really fishy to me. But at the same time, it's like, why would you ghost me when you didn't get to hit it? When you wait until after we had sex, actually had sex, before you ghosted me? So she, she finds, like, stuff to be weird. Like, he omits certain things. He's very vague on a lot of, like, his family stuff. Um, and she's very, she's, like, has her moments of suspicion where she has, she asks her brother at one point, Vlad, her older brother, um, hard code, go back, hard code, Vlad. Um, she asks him to like look into uh, Dragomir. He can't find anything on him. The name, the last name, Lamian, he's, Lamian, Lamian, yeah. Uh, the last name pulls up nothing. There's, there's nothing on the internet. He can't find it, a, a trace, which is, uh, unusual in itself but also not really unusual because Vlad himself has been known to troll the internet for mentions of him he, he he's like a very private person and he keeps his shit offline so he's like okay it doesn't really send up red flags but at the same time there's really nothing for me to to give you um but she has her suspicions and she's like Okay, she at one point she calls him on like possibly being married and whatever and he's like no and she feels really foolish. And then after that she's like I'm just going to trust him to whatever. So when this thing happens with his brother, she he like uh FaceTimes her. I think they call it video call in the in the thing, but I'm just going to assume it's FaceTime. Um he like FaceTimes her and the background looks like someone's house. It doesn't look like a hospital. And But he says he's at the hospital. So she's like, no, I've had enough of this. Like, you don't look like you're at the fucking hospital. Where are you? And he gets offended and very defensive. And he's like, turns the camera around to show that he's in like a private upscale hospital room. Like, you know, and she feels like an idiot. And she's very apologetic and she's very whatever. And he's like, don't worry, we'll talk about this when we get back, when I get back to whatever. Eventually, uh, the brother comes out of the coma. He returns, uh, Dragomir returns back to uh, New York. And they do eventually hook up. And then there's a lot of shit shit down. Okay. Um, and yeah, so towards the end of the book, a secret that he's been holding comes out. And Vlad finally, like, digs up dirt on him. And it turns out that he is one of the princes of the, the monarchy, the family that rules Rascovia. He's been disinherited by his parents. His parents, they, they have dinner with his parents at one point, And his parents are literal pieces of shit. Like, just snobby and mean and rude and they like speak about her in uh Ruscovian like just t saying she's a slut and saying like whatever and she's like okay I don't speak Ruscovian but I do speak Russian and that word might mean the same thing in Russian as it does in Russian you just call me a slut or a whore or something didn't you um 
she doesn't take it lying down. She's very sassy about it. And she, you know, her and Dragon Man end up leaving the dinner. Uh, and yeah, it, it just, it, it comes out that he's a, a member of this family. He's not the crown prince, obviously. He has like nine brothers. Uh, he's been disinherited. He wanted to be independent. He wanted to be whatever. His family took that as a snub and they disinherited him. So he moved from Rescovia to New York, started his business, has made something of himself and has a very strained relationship with the rest of his family, except for his, his, uh, his brother. So, uh, she has like a freak out moment where she's like, how could you keep this from me? And then he stops picking up the phone and she's like, okay, now I'm trying to reach out to you. Like before I wouldn't pick up your calls cause I was pissed off. Now that I've thought about it, I didn't tell you that I was trying to get money from your company for sex toys. <laughs> and so really I was omitting stuff too. So like, I can't really be too mad about it. So then she starts calling him and he doesn't pick up. It turns out he's someplace with no reception. It's, it's not, it's not a big deal. Um, when he eventually goes into labor, she goes to the vet's office. She finds him there. They have like their little makeup session. And I think they like have sex on the vet's desk. I, I forget, I can't remember if they went all the way, but there's like a little sexy time there. Uh, and yeah, they end up, they end up being together and fuck both their families and fuck whatever everybody else thinks because he, he comes out and says that like he knew from after the first meeting that he had with her in the boardroom where they pitched the idea, he did his own background check and he found out that she owns this sex toy company. So it was not a thing for him. He never brought it up, but he knew. Uh, so yeah, so Eh? <laughs> that's all I got. I'm sorry. Um, that's basically the plot to the book. Um, for the rating for the book, I gave it an eight and a half. I liked uh, Vlad's book a little bit better. I don't know why. Like, I think I talked about it at one point in Vlad's uh, book review, in, in the review for Hard Code, that there were, like, sessions where... Uh, Vlad and Fanny, who's the female main, main female character, where they were like um, doing like long distance Skype type um, sexting type stuff. And the way that uh, the authors described like his reactions to stuff was, it just got me and I don't know why. Like it just did, it just got me, like, you know? Um, uh, so I, I did like hard code a little bit better. But this book was definitely funny. It was definitely like what you would think of uh, in your quintessential rom-com type movie, but in book form. Um, full of hijinks, full of banter, full of tit for tat type stuff. Uh, I really did like Bel Bella as a character. Um, I liked the fact that she was brash and she was independent and she stood up for herself. Like I really like that. I don't really like like simpering, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, so that's, that's that on that. I got nothing else. <laughs> um, if you like me and you like my channel, please consider subscribing <laughs> for more like this. Subscribe. Uh, if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. I upload at least one video a week, usually on Thursdays, sometimes a second video on Monday, if I'm not being lazy. Um, if you would like, you can follow me on social media. I do have a members only Facebook group, an Instagram and a Twitter devoted to this channel. You can follow me wherever. You can comment if you want. I love comments. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you want. I don't really pay attention to that. I don't know if that's important. Is that important? Like I get like one or two thumbs up a video. Um, is it gonna throw me into the algorithm so that I get more view? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's that on that. That's that on that. I'm done with that. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely recommend if you like a good lighthearted, funny read, a beach read, a, a good rom-com, I would definitely recommend this book. I would definitely recommend this series. Like I said, I'm super excited for, um, the third book in the series. So, uh, yeah, I guess keep a lookout for that review. It'll come shortly after the release is at some point. <laughs> 
depending on how long it takes me to finish the book. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. I really thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Okay. We're going to be back with more IAD in the next one. So I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. 34 minutes. <laughs>
And she's like, these are the best. And not to toot my own horn or anything, but I make good cookies. <laughs> um, so yeah. Do I have anything now? No. So a lot of this is going to get clipped out just because charlatus interruptus and my brain just going completely haywire and me losing the plot. And yeah. So a lot of that will end up in the bloopers. I know you guys are really here for the bloopers anyway, so... I'm Audi 5000, bitches. I'll see you later. Finger bang. Pew, pew. Don't finger bang. Let's see if my remote's going to work.